Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, or medical well-being. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's show. My very, very great guest tonight is Russell Kick, Ph.D. He's CEO and founder of... Self-Discovery Research Institute, and we are absolutely going to get into more of that. Uh, Russell is here with us. We're going to talk to him in just a moment, but before I do, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to the show today. Today is a very special show. There's a couple of things going on besides uh, my great guest. Is that This is the 101st show of Journeys with Rebecca, and as you know, we've been off the air for a couple of weeks because, boy, have we made some changes. You need to go to the website, journeyswithrebecca.com. We have a whole new look, a whole new feel to the website. I think you're going to find it much easier to motivate around in. And as always, we've kept some of the very special features and the easiest features for you. Don't forget to look under Journeys News because Journeys News is where we're going to bring you the latest information, changes, updates, things that we think are of importance. And, of course, it's always going to show the guest, the recent this week's guest, as well as introduce to you next week's guest. And as you can see, we have this week's guest up there is Russell Gick. And then next week's future guest is going to be um, Dr. Edward Henry Dowdy, Jr. And also Mindy Hitchcock, who is an, uh, a holistic lawyer. And that is going to prove to be a very, very interesting show. And as we do each and every week, we'd like to address your attention to our world news. Here you're going to find some of the, good, the best and, and newest discoveries, not only in the scientific community, but also maybe in the paranormal community. Um, one of the things that I want to draw your attention to is uh, um, about the hole that's been drilled to the bottom of the Earth's crust. They've actually broke through to the mantle, so we're going to keep you updated on that as to what they're going to be finding out. I think these new discoveries about what Earth is about is really going to be proved to be quite interesting uh, for the world as a whole, as humanity is concerned. Um, also, there's some other interesting news there about um, a, a psychic in there and also about the oldest known object that's on display. So definitely go down there and click into those articles and read them because they're really fun. And don't forget, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my great sponsor, Fate Magazine. Uh, go to www.fatemag.com. There you can go, and they've got a new website, by the way, much easier to work with. Uh, you go right in there, and they're still offering a free uh, copy, one free copy to you, so please get in on that. And also, you can, you can subscribe to the Journey's Weekly e-newsletter. We do protect your privacy. These are, your email addresses will never be sold or distributed. They're simply for the newsletter that I will be sending out on a weekly basis as updates and reminders. Um, and don't forget to email me with your questions, your, your concerns. Uh, maybe you have a guest idea. You have pictures to show, whatever the case may be. You have um, a, a, a psychic question that I can answer for you. Please email me at mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. Now that we have gotten all of the good stuff out of the way, as we do each and every week, you know, our world has gotten to be quite a crazy place for us. And, you know, I hear more and more people, um, they come to me, they, you know, they get their personal private readings from me. And we have lots of different questions that, that they, there seems to be a theme about um, what's my purpose in life? How do I 
how do I get through this depression? How do I help myself? Where do I go? I find more and more that people are trying to look outside of themselves for the answers. And my guest tonight, as I have said, is Russell Kick, the key to self-discovery. We're going to help answer those questions for you. So I'd like to take the opportunity now and say welcome to the show, Russell Kick. Thank you, Rebecca. Pleasure to be here. Well, you know what? I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have you here. This is just going to be great. I have had an opportunity to look through your book, and I've got a, a ton of questions myself to ask of you. But why don't we start real quick before we run out of time on this segment? Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about where you've come from to this point to to arrive here at Journeys with Rebecca. Well, I had a uh, pretty normal childhood in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, at age 28 or 30, uh, so I had a life-changing experience with a near-death experience, and it, it opened up some doors to me, and I, I've been uh, quite different since. And I, I like to travel in other realms now, and uh, my interests are spiritual. So I've devoted the last part of my life to getting the information, getting the knowledge that's available to me, and putting it in a form that people can use and make make it uh, have themselves a better life so i've uh, i live in tucson arizona now and I'm, hang uh, on to that thought russell we're going to be back in just a moment with more journeys with rebecca and the key to self-discovery find out more about a show topic or guest log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with Russell Kick, CEO and founder, Self-Discovery Research Institute. And, you know, um, Russell, you um, you had talked about just having a pretty normal childhood until the near-death experience. You know, I find that pretty amazing because, actually, I've interviewed quite a few people uh, here on Journeys with Rebecca that have had similar experiences with these near-death experiences, NDEs, and it, it really seems to really be a huge spiritual awakening for people. Um, and it takes them into different directions, and obviously um, obviously, um, you are no different. You, you had a huge spiritual life after that. I mean, it was like this whole thing to, to self-discovery. So um, I, let, let's talk a little bit about how you've taken that information and placed it in this book for um, the ease of people. Well, uh, the information is, uh, comes in, uh, in meditation or in a, in a quiet state of mind, and uh, I use a computer to take notes, and quite a bit comes through when I'm at the keyboard, and uh, I've spent years organizing it and trying to put it in a form that people can understand because there's a lot of wisdom, ancient wisdom in there that uh, is in books, but it's really hard to grasp it for the average person. So it's, it's an attempt not only to share what I've learned, but to put it in a form that people can actually use in their lives to make their lives better and uh, become all they can be because uh, uh, life is beautiful despite all the, all the news that's on the air. And uh, we, we've got to get the word out that uh, there's a lot of potential in everybody to, to do a lot more of it and become a lot better than, than they think they can be. Well, and, and I have to agree with that. One of the things that when when you we first got in touch with each other, there's a, a a release paper that you had sent to me. It says, "Knowing Your Future: A Life Without Pain." Um, you explore the possibilities in your new book, and one of the things that, or some of the things that that you can that people can obtain, I guess, or that, that they can grasp a hold of through the reading of this book is that one can learn how to harness one's psychic abilities. Um, learning how to tend to one's spiritual well-being, and I'd like to come back to that thought here in just a moment. Um, also, alternatives to drug therapy for physical and mental pain, how one can prevent depression and other mental illnesses, how to use the powers of self to realize your life purposes, and that's the second biggest thing I want to talk to you about. And, of course, um, the NDEs or near-death experiences. So let's let's talk about um, tending to one's spiritual well-being. Um you know, you and I are both on the same page with this. I believe that our society is one that 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 is one of let's take care of our physical needs, let's take care of our material needs, but we have a tendency to lose track of what's inside, and I think that's what creates a lot of unhappiness with people because they're constantly out trying to buy things or to obtain material items, and it really does leave most people very empty, and they keep looking and looking, going, well, is this all there is to life? Exactly. Which then brings us to the next thing is, what is my life's purpose? And the answers are, are inside of ourselves. And uh, 
I, I use things that I practice on myself, like the use of imagination. You can get inside your, your what some people call their spiritual heart, and inside your spiritual heart are literally answers to your questions about who you are and what your purpose in life is. And once you make a connection there, and you you know who you are and what you're about, everything changes. Your your not, not only your, your your feeling, but you understand what life is about. And in my own case, uh, any feelings, negative feelings, even about death, just go away. You, you just know how great things are in the future. And in, in this day and age, you you really need that kind of confidence to deal with all the stuff that comes along. So I I I think your spiritual well-being is uh, paramount and but I found that if you give rather than take, and you love and show compassion, that it comes back to you uh, more than tenfold, and you tend to your spiritual well-being. That spiritual well-being uh, really relates to how you feel about yourself and, uh, and others. Well, let, let's let's carry that thought. Um, one of the questions I'm, I can I can hear people asking out there in the audience is. Okay, well, all that's great, but how do I find my spiritual self within? Is, your book is giving very specific, in my opinion, very specific steps on how to go internal. Is that right? Yes, it's all it's internal, and uh, I, I, what, I have uh, music and, uh, and visualizations. I mean, there's various techniques to, to use, but I, I, I really like imagination the best because imagination is greatly misunderstood. It's a power we have within us that the ancient people knew about that enables us to go within and to actually seek and find things. And uh, things like, what is my purpose? What are my talents? Uh, what can I do with a situation? Even self-healing. Uh, all these things are inside of ourselves and they involve quiet time and uh, reaching within, seeking within, and yes, I, I do have a series of steps that people can go through, which uh, involves becoming quiet and uh, focusing your consciousness inside and uh, traveling down within yourself, and uh, these are things that for centuries people did in the, old, in the ancient times, and it's been lost in modern times, and some people think it's kind of hokey to do this, but it's quite natural. I mean, we are spiritual beings, and we're really just getting in touch with ourselves, well, I think I think you the the system is called the holistic way or the way, right? Right. That's the holistic way, and it's holistic means top down, whole, and it's a way of looking at your whole person. It's uh, starting from the top down and finding your 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 true self within, and there's facets of self that you can unlock uh, to your creativity, for example, and. Uh, so the, the secret of spiritual well-being is, is holistic in that it's your total self, your whole self, and not just fragmented self. So it, there's, a, there's a system in the book that's designed to help people to go within and to find their, their whole, complete purpose, to learn all about themselves, and it's called the way. Well, in, in, your, in the very beginning of your book, it says the holistic way a modern and innovative approach to self-discovery, self-development, and life mastering is a system consisting of 12 guides, self-empowering music, visual tools designed to be easy to learn and fulfilling to use. Let's talk about the 12 guides. I think that's just absolutely fascinating uh, because I have, um, I myself have guides that have been around me, and I used to call them the Council of 12, and they're 12 very distinct personalities. That's how they... They seem to me, and each one of them, as they speak to me, has spoken to me in a different manner or a different way. And when I was looking at your book and I said the 12 guides, and, you know, here it is. I've been speaking to these guys all my life, and I'm like, okay, so now I get it. I get it. I understand what these 12 guides are. These are 12 personalities about the 12 facets of self that I'm supposed to be learning about. That's right. That's and, 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 you know, it took this book after all these years for me to learn that. I think that I was just blown away. I was like, "Oh, see, there, in, for me, there's no accidents, uh, Russell. There's no accidents. You know, you, 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 and I are sharing time here. You're, we're sharing time with the audience. And you know, I've heard other people that said that you know they work with a council of twelve. I, I just find this the most fascinating thing in the whole world right here. I was just totally blown away by that. Yes, yeah, so and these twelve guides. What's uh, fascinating about it uh, to me is they work together. And uh, the concept of synergy comes into play where 
you, you, you actually get more than 12, you get the interaction of the 12. Yes. And modern science has shown that this is very powerful. This, this creates a, 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 an aspect, a, a new self that's greater than it would have been otherwise. And uh, Einstein and uh, the last 50 years, this has been uh, studied in uh, physics and chemistry, and for some reason, it just hasn't made it to the public uh, awareness yet. And one of my goals is to bring this out because it's spiritual, it's based on ancient philosophy, but it's also modern science. It all comes together to produce something that's very powerful and very usable and available to each of us. And I'd like to see people do it. And when everybody does it, then the world gets a little bit better. Well, and, you know, in this crazy, crazy, crazy time that we're living in, I don't think the world has ever been quite as crazy as it is right now. Of course, I don't really remember being here before, but, you know, in my opinion anyway, I think we um, our technology has advanced. Um, but with the technology, I believe that we've gotten so busy because our world is moving at such a fast pace that we as individuals forget to stop and take the time on a daily basis, and it only takes a few moments. It doesn't, you know, it's not about um, the quantity of time. It's about the quality of time one sits in 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 quiet space, and that's what exactly. I call it. Yeah. Exactly. That's what people ask. People say, well, my life is so hectic, and I'm so busy. How do I get started on this? What do I do? And if you could just find some quiet time every day, 10 minutes or so, and, and, and just turn off the, the incessant chatter going on in your head and our heads and... Uh, and just uh, be quiet and allow these things to bubble up. And uh, eventually, you know, some people, some faster than others, ideas start coming to your mind, and you, you do get you, you get in touch with yourself, and these guides uh, make themselves known to you. But it's it's hard for them to, to make themselves known when you're running around and uh, just from one thing to another and, and, and don't have time just to uh, listen to them. So it's listen, listen within. So quiet time is the key, and people call it different things. It could be meditation, but it just could be just quiet. Turn it, turn it off. Be alone for 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, um, Russell, that's an interesting point. When you The, the term you used was be alone. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've run across in the in the past few years that really have never done that. They've never been alone with themselves. Um, my feeling is, is a lot of that is fear. Uh, you know, fear to be alone, fear of what they're going to discover, or, you know, fear that they're not going to like what they see. But my opinion is, is if there's something about self that you're not liking, it's a good time for you not to find judgment within yourself, but certainly if you don't like it, to try to find some steps to change it. Exactly. And one of the things that society uh, kind of imposes on us is that we can't change ourselves, that we're stuck, that we need medicine or whatever to, <laughs> yeah. to get better. And the truth of the matter is we are... We are pure energy, and we have total capability to change ourselves when we want to. So this first chapter on awakening, for example, is very important because when people believe this, they can make it happen. And uh, we're not things. We're not nouns. We're verbs. We're energy, and uh, we're spirit. And it's totally within our control to become what we want to be. And I have to agree with that. We, we are all those things, and we are have the capabilities. But I want to get back real quick here for a few minutes before we move on past this subject about the quiet time. And, and, and the complaint that I, like you and I both have heard is that I just don't have enough time. I'm so busy. I'm this. I'm that. There's a lot of excuses that one can put in front of each other. I just don't have the time to sit. Um, but I would, I would tell people that if they're watching the news or if they're um, getting up and going to work every day, then there, there is always five or ten minutes that one could set aside in their schedule, even if they have children, if they have jobs, if you know they are married, if they've got a lot of obligations. There's always five or ten minutes that a person can find each and every day that maybe they could utilize a little differently than what they're doing, and they have no idea how great this is going to be. So hang on, and we're going to be right back with more of Russell and the key to self-discovery in just a moment. Talk with an extra dimension. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with my guest, Russell Kick, talking about the key to self-discovery. Um, first of all, as I, and I, I'll probably say this five more times before we're done, Russell, your book is absolutely invaluable. 
when it comes to a step-by-step approach in order to teach people what it's like to to tap into their psychic abilities, to tap into their place of peace. But, you know, um, as I stated in the first part of the show, one of the things that people are always asking me about is, you know, what's my purpose? What's my purpose in life? How do I find out my purpose in life? And I know that you being, um, you know, being what you've done is that you might have a better or clearer way of presenting that than I myself would. So I'd be interested in having you maybe share that with the audience so that those out there that are listening and would really like to find out what their purpose, how really kind of simple it is and also how um, helpful it is to find one's purpose and passion in life. Yes, when, and it's very important because when you do find it, it, it's more than just doing something and living it. It, it, it helps with respect to your well-being your self-image, essentially everything gets better when you are on uh, on your path, so to speak. And uh, most people, when they're very young, have a good feel for what their purpose is, and then life becomes so cluttered up that uh, it gets lost. Your, your dream gets lost. So there's several ways of getting at the purpose. And uh, my belief and what I've seen and experienced is that everybody has one. It doesn't have to be to climb Mount Everest. Your purpose might be to drive a taxi cab whatever it is. And uh, so different approaches that I take, one, again, is to seek within and to have quiet time and to ask what your purpose is. And what's unique about this of most people is the answers don't necessarily come right away. They may come in a dream. The answer may come in a bookstore when you find yourself leafing through a book that you wouldn't have done otherwise. So the answers come at different times, but you have to ask. And in quiet time is when you are communicating with the depth within you, in your your spiritual self, your spiritual heart, which wants you to know this. So that's one thing I would recommend. And some people say, well, that might take a little while. So there's a couple other things you can do as well. One is most people, as I said, had this dream in their life at one time that disappeared. See if you can go back and find that dream. It probably is pretty close to what you thought at one time was going to be your life, and then for whatever reason it disappeared, turned into smoke. So see if you can recapture that, go back into your early years, your youth, and see, see what your dream was. Another way of getting at it is through creativity. Uh, all right, define define creativity because I think people have a misconception of what that is. Right. Some people it's, believe creativity is somebody who uh, paints or draws or is a sculptor. Well, creativity is self-expression, and it shows up in, in, in our life. We are co-creators. Our whole life is creating. So creating a painting or a drawing is, is one way of creating, but I'm talking about a broader creativity. We, you're creator of your life creator, you, you are in control of uh, your destiny. So when you become aware that you are a creator and then engage in some activities where you might write or do things, uh, such as painting, uh, or, or even create a, a, a life for your pets, anything that involves something that did not exist before that you brought into existence is your creativity. And science has shown that when you're creative, you get more healthy. Your life gets longer. So it, it opens up part of us that was closed before, and part of this opening up is, is a release of information as to who you are and what your purpose is. So this is, this is something you can do in your active waking state, is to try to create, create better life uh, for people, uh, create ideas, whatever. Bring something into existence that didn't exist before, and you're tapping into the the 98% of your brain that's basically unused. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of space, isn't it? <laughs> it's an awful lot of space, I and mean, there's a lot a lot of good stuff in there. But being creative is one way of getting at it. So there's this is three three different ways you can get at who you are, and it, it's a feeling when you when you are make a hit when you start to discover what your purpose is. You feel it. You, you just know it, and you begin to feel better, and your outlook on life gets a little bit better. And many, many, many great people over the, over the years have said, it's never too late to do this. I, I speak a lot with people who are 
uh, retiring and, and what am I going to do with the rest of my life? You, you, you can start at that point when you're in the 60s or 70s or whatever. It's never too late to find out who you are and what you want to do with your life. And when you find this, you find happiness. Well, and, and happiness for a lot of people is, is an elusive thought, but um, happiness is, is, is really comes from within. It doesn't, it's, you know, our society is so strange because we believe happiness is the new car, the new house, the new furniture, the new clothes, the new, the new, the new, the, the buying, and, and that isn't what happiness is. Happiness is being, feeling safe, feeling secure, feeling creative, feeling love from within. And it, there, and so much more. I mean, we could go on all day with explicatives on on what happiness is, but it's not something that is created outside of ourselves. And I I need to express that just a lot because people still are constantly searching outside of themselves when everything lies within. Because of as you stated in the very beginning, we're all interconnected. All this energy, we're just energy beings in a in in this dense matter physical body. But we're still made up all of the same stuff, so there's got to be an interconnection there, if you know, if that's the case. And scientifically, we can prove that. Sure. So, oh, hang on, and we're going to be right back with more of the key to self-discovery and Russell Kick. Don't go away. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We're here with Russell Kick, the author of The Key to Self-Discovery. He also has a Ph.D., CEO and founder, Self-Discovery Research Institute, Inc. And, you know, during the break, Russell, one of the things that I, I wanted to ask you to kind of get into for the audience is a couple of things, is how can businesses and people that are in key positions in, like, managements or um, owners or supervisors, how can they use the way to increase workplace productivity as well as, you know, making a, a better cohesive environment for people to go to work. Well, they can treat their people uh, well. Uh, ah, there's a concept. <laughs> respect for individuals. People know when they're being used. So the, one of the first steps is to be nice to your employees and treat them as creative individuals and uh, uh, give them a lot of compliments and uh, pay them well. <laughs> All these things add up. And, uh, well, I, I, I think that to provide a quiet time for your employees every day, for example, so they could be alone for a few minutes, and uh, actually there's some uh, visualization and some music tools that I could recommend. And when, when, when people are happy with themselves, then the, the workforce is cohesive and more productive. So it's up to the, the, uh, the boss, the employers, to create an environment, a of, of, uh, positive environment, one of creativity, reward, and compliments, and not one of fear and... Uh, Intimidation, yeah. Right, and, and, and people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs any second. So when they're positive and uplifting and uh, they're given a little bit of time each day, perhaps, to explore themselves in just 10-minute break and... Uh, and encourage to work together because when employees work together, it provides for a powerful force. All right, so for everyone out there listening, if you are an employee of a company, get Russell's book, send it or put it on the desk of your manager, CEO or something. Maybe they'll read it. If you are a manager, owner of a company, CEO, supervisor, whatever, I recommend you reading it. It certainly can't hurt. Um, so there's my little two cents for that, Russell, because I believe that... Um, you know, you're, some of the things that you talked about were very much like what some of the Eastern companies have done. You know, the Japanese, every day, they get out and everybody sits, gets up and they, they stretch, they exercise. You know, they, 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 they have that moment in time where they're, they're not just like working, working, working. And they find that their employees are much happier, they're more well-adjusted, they're less ill, um, they're very creative people. And so when they leave their job, they're not, they're not distraught and they're not, wore out, they're not wrung out, you know, they feel just as good going to work as they do going home. And that's, right, don't, that's don't kind of an gun. interesting concept here for the United States. They don't bring a gun to work and start shooting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, one of the other questions that I wanted to have you answer for us is that you have claimed, and this is part of the suggestions here for you, is that you've claimed that the institutions of our society, have they strive to keep people asleep 
and I want you to first of all um, define a sleep and how does our society do such a thing? Well, sleep means you don't know you, who, you, who you are or what your purpose is, and you don't understand life, and you, and you go through life in, in, a, in, a, in a sleep-like hypnotic state, not knowing who you are or what you are, and uh, no idea what life is about or what your potential is. And the institutions, uh, education is, is, a, is a good example. Our educational system is built on concepts that are two centuries old, uh, in uh, the farming community and the agricultural community and the uh, industrial society, which has been replaced by the information society. And so we're, we're, we're basically training people to be left brain. They're not paying any attention to the creative side, and, and all that has to change. Uh, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but religion sometimes is fear-based and uh, doesn't encourage people to be active thinkers and... Uh, promote intermediaries between individuals and the higher power, uh, which is not needed. You can communicate yourself with the higher power. You don't need, you don't need somebody in between you. Uh, I agree medicine, with that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you've had the experiences yourself. You, you know you don't need anybody to tell you what to do or how to do it. And the medical community and the uh, drug companies and the agency all the time programming us to think that... Uh, well, it's going to be cold today, you're going to get sick, so buy this. And so we're constantly bombarded by suggestions which, which put us down. And I've uh, recently come across a, an article that uh, did a survey and found out that the news on our TV has an 18 to 1 ratio of bad news to good news. Huh. Now, is that a surprise? Yeah. Well, our news is really not the news. It's all about the latest awful things that are happening. They aren't about the discoveries. They aren't about... What your, your, you know, all the good things that happen. It's all, it's very unbalanced in that. I have to agree 100%. I rarely, rarely turn on my news just because it's just filled with, with horror stories that keep people in fear. It's, I don't know what's happened to our media, but I, I rise and I, I challenge them to rise up above that and report good things, report discoveries, report different things than what they're doing. Well, someone somewhere got the idea that bad news sells. And True. <laughs> But our commercials are getting the same way. Uh, they're, they're all put down. They're all designed to make you feel like you're going to get this, or you're going to get that, and the only thing you can really do about it is to buy this product and keep on using it. So from from day one, we're inundated uh, as children with all these uh, ideas coming through the various institutions of society that we are less than we are. And that uh, but somebody are. else has our answers, our cures, our our right. way of life, yeah. The government, the industry, whoever, we need to go out and buy their products and, and support them. Exactly. When, when when all the answers are within. So the first step in... in, in all right, so hang on to that and we'll come back to the first step. Okay. Don't go away. More than talk, it's entertaining insight and discoveries. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We're here with Russell Kick, and you know Russell, um, you were gonna. I'm gonna let you finish up from your our, our last uh, segment here, uh, but there's so much more that we're gonna talk about. So you you said the first thing that we can do, and we had to cut you off. Yeah, the first step for for everybody is to open your mind to the fact that you are more, and that everything you believe isn't necessarily true, and to start questioning it. Just open your mind and open your heart and become aware that there's, there's more to life in yourself than, than you really believe and that the beliefs, you weren't born with them, you were programmed to believe. Thank you. I believe that. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Absolutely. And here's another thing. I, I, I say, I've been saying this for years to uh, my clients, to my students, um, are you a spectator or are you a participant in life? And a participant in life is one that feel, sees, and touches different things, and they do question things. Um, and, a, and a spectator, somebody, as you would say, and many other people say, that have just walked around life, and they're kind of asleep, believing that that pill is going to make them feel better, younger, uh, healthier, whatever uh, the case may be. So um, let's talk a little bit, um, 
before we run out of time is I'd like to give you the opportunity, first of all, is to talk to us about your the Self-Discovery Research Institute. I know you have a website. We also want to find out where people can get a hold of the book so that they can have this marvelous book for themselves um, to start processing their life in a different manner, looking at it in a different manner. At least, if nothing else, it will make people question what they have been doing up to this point. Right. One of the basic goals is just to open minds and uh, let people see that there are alternatives to, uh, to, to what everybody thinks is life. Uh, the book uh, is available at Amazon and dot com in the both paperback and ebook form. So that's probably the best source. And, uh, it's working its way in the bookstores. It may or may not be in, in the bookstores, uh, but you can get it. They'll order it for you if you ask for it. Okay, and what's your website? Talk, website tell us a little is, bit about that. Okay, the website is uh, www. S D S as in Sam, D as in dog. R as in Russell, I as in income tax. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, sdri.com. And uh, it has information on there about the projects we're working on, and uh, it has some PowerPoint presentations that people can follow and, and actually start getting involved in uh, doing some of the exercises that, I, that I've talked about with the, with the imagination and, and self-discovery. So there's, there's things to to do on there that well, you can actually use and, and begin the process. And then there's some music that can be downloaded. And basically it, it can be used to get, get a person started on, on, on a, a pathway to uh, you know, a better life. And uh, so we're pleased that things are coming along. And the, the uh, Institute is something I've put together in the past couple of years. Uh, so that I have a, a way of pulling all the information together into to one source to combine the research of the ancient times, uh, Plato and uh, the ancient Egypt, with modern science. Because a lot of what I have is uh, I, I still teach online. I, a lot of modern scientific thought is being integrated into ancient philosophy. So it's a, it's a merger of science and faith and. Uh, it just gives me an opportunity to, to research it, put it together, and there's a lot of projects on the drawing board uh, that, are, that are going to be finding their way out. You care to, to let us in on some of those projects that maybe are going to find their way to the public so that we have the a little advanced knowledge? Well, one of them is a follow-up on the uh, Key to Self-Discovery book that's going to uh, get into some more details about how to actually do these things in, in, in more depth that I found that people want to know and people are interested in hearing and, and into the subject of self-development, how can you realize your full potential. So it's the next step from discovery. It's, it's self-development. It's and, the implementation uh, of it. Yes. And uh, uh, we do a lot of research that women would find interesting on feminine energies and the, the emergence of feminine energies in our society, which uh, I think is going to carry us into a new era. Uh, the, the rectify the balance that, and the imbalance that exists because of the suppression of women all through the years, centuries actually. And we see this happening and uh, there's, there's really great things going to be happening and women are going to be playing a leading role in the emergence of perhaps a new age coming in the next uh, decade. Wow, I like that thought. I do. Yeah. I think there needs to be a little bit more balance between the males and female energies that we've seen here on the earth plane. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I do. I agree. And, and you know, before we run out of time, Russell, I do want to let everyone know, too, is that your link on my website, which is journeyswithrebecca.com, is also going to remain active. So if anybody didn't get the um, web address for you uh, in order to get your book or to even just to discover your website, which, by the way, is really fabulous, um, they can just click on the link and they, it'll it'll take them directly to you um, and to your website. So um, I I want to thank you so very much for being a guest here and to share this valuable information. Um, you know, obviously when your next works come out, please let me know so that we can have you back on uh, because I know that this is something that people are going to be waiting for and I can't wait to um, have you back on again so we can talk a little bit more about the key to self-discovery and the implementation. So thank you so much, Russell, for being a guest on Journeys with Rebecca and thank also you, to the Rebecca. audience. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.
Check out Rebecca's website for the latest Journeys news and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discovery. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night. <laughs>